Being built throughout the 13th to the 19th century, this series of intersecting man-made caves lies here underneath Chislehurst. That's right, we're here at the Chislehurst Caves. My name's Axel. I'm Sean. Come with us to find out what it's all about. Chislehurst Caves are a series of intersecting man-made tunnels and caverns covering 22 miles in Chislehurst, South East London. They are up to 30 metres below the homes and woodlands above. The caves have been carved out over hundreds of years and are entirely man-made. They were originally dug for chalk, used in lime burning and brick making for the building of London, as well as for flints to fire the tinder boxes and flintlock guns of years ago. First opened to the public in 1900 as a showplace, the guides told the Victorians a theory that the mines were made by Druids, Romans and Saxons, with stories of smuggling and murder. The last 100 years has added ammunition storage for the Woolwich Arsenal in World War I, then mushroom growing in the 1920s and 1930s. During the Blitz, the caves became an underground town for the largest deep air raid shelter outside of London, protecting over 15,000 people every night, who each paid a penny to enter. The tunnels were fitted with electric lighting, toilets and washing facilities. A chapel was built and also a hospital. In the 1950s, 60s and 70s, the caves were used as a venue for dances and concerts, presenting the foundations of jazz, skiffle and folk music to the most famous names in pop and rock. The caves have appeared in television programmes and provided a location for a broad range of cave and underground scenes for feature films, adverts and music videos over the last 50 years all the way to the present day. Now, the caves are open as a tourist attraction and education centre, with a gift shop and cafe catering for visitors, group outings, private functions and children's parties. We enter for a tour on the history of the Chislehurst Caves. We started off the tour by heading below ground into the caves and were handed one oil lamp per group before being given an overview of the cave tunnel network and a brief history of why the caves were originally made. The section, so the Saxon section here, the Roman section here and the Druid section up here. They were using the caves for religious activities and it's rumoured that a lot of those activities were human sacrifices. So we'll get a little bit more into that when we get back to the Druid section. We were about to explore one of the 22 miles of the caves. I think it's cold down there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you see my breath? Yeah. Yeah, right. We first saw the chapel section. Ground is still considered holy ground to this day. It was consecrated by the Bishop of Rochester. And because of the amount of people that were down here, they ran services seven days a week. Yeah. We've got our lanterns, we're ready to go through the caves. Any questions going around, don't hesitate to ask any problems that you know. And if anyone feels like they can't continue with the tour for whatever reason. We were then told of how the caves were used as ammunition storage during World War One. ammunition down here. At one point they had over a thousand tons of TNT down here, so there was a lot of it. And obviously with the British involved, they did have military guards. So a little bit like these guys here. Uh, hopefully they wouldn't have been smoking. Uh, believe it or not, it did just be quite a detailed face at one point, it's just crumbled over the years, it doesn't look as good now. All these faces are carved apart, there's hundreds and thousands of these. I feel like I'm an archaeologist in a film. Here's where the treasure is. <laughs> So during the 50s and 60s, Radio Caroline took over down here, and Radio Caroline was a private radio station. It was extremely popular at the time, so as you can imagine, a lot of the big bands and names at the time wanted Radio Caroline playing their music. Next, we were taken to the stage, 
where the likes of Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix have played throughout the years. These are the only lights we've got now. That's it, don't trip. Catching flies. <laughs> For the majority of the remainder of the tour, there was limited lighting and we had to use our oil lamps to guide the way. Okay, so just watch yourselves coming through here. It's quite a small tunnel when it slopes a little bit. There's no lights. Because the sun in Chester and Dorothy, yeah. Oh, that wall is a bit so small. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's no lights whatsoever down here now. She's using this lamp. It's just a little area. There's loads of parts that's blocked off. It's apparently 22 miles down here, but we're only going around the outer edge of a, on a one mile stretch. Yeah. Look at that. I'm What's down there? Much I wonder. Much, to be honest, because I don't know how long it's taken to find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that God. was a ghost then. Jesus, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> After we thought we'd seen a ghost, we were led to some paintings that represented an eerie past. Blood and people supposedly coming down for the sacrifice. A wicker basket and the basket would then be set alight. Uh, they weren't the nicest of people, but as you can imagine, they never had any repeat offenders. So <laughs> it was obviously a successful. Right, the next part is like a maze. The next part is like a maze. That's not going to What's in there? Yeah. Then we witnessed what looked like ancient carvings, but this piece of art was actually created in 1995. The artist added Spider-Man at the bottom of the piece to ensure the history of the piece wouldn't be exaggerated. And she decided that she wanted to come here and do this as a way to keep the start of her art career. So fresh out of university, she came down and harassed the moment of the month. We then walked down the longest tunnel in the network, which led to a mysterious end. Nobody knows what this spot was used for. Some say that it was used by druids as a sacrifice spot, where they would walk the sacrifice down the longest path before laying them on this rock. They also say that this is carved out for the blood of the sacrifice to run down and to be collected at the bottom. Others say that it's a miner's workbench. What's happening, Sean? Going to put us into pitch black darkness. The guides then told us of how scary the caves could get for people during the blitz as at night they would turn the lights off because they were paranoid that they would be detected in shelter and suspected that the light would shine upwards through the ground. The guides then took all of our lanterns off us, leaving us in pitch black at the sacrifice spot to know exactly how it would feel. This is what I imagine the catacombs of Horace to be like. Yeah. But obviously with schools on the wall. It probably is in other areas, but not the tourist bit. Yeah. Before we headed to the living quarters, we had to pass a haunted pool. You can see here there is water. So this is a natural water pool. It does come from the rainwater. And um, before World War II, it was a lot deeper than it is now. At that point, it was about 10 to 15 foot deep. But when World War II started and people started to stay down here, they just filled it in so it's a little bit safer and they didn't lose anyone down there. These caves are believed to have been dug initially to find chalk and flint back in 1250. However, they could be much older than that. The caves have seen a lot of supernatural activity and the reports seem to centre around poltergeist activity, such as locks being thrown around, cables being torn from sockets, and chalk being thrown at visitors. One of the most infamous ghosts of Chislehurst Caves is that of a white lady 
that haunts this very pool. Her apparition has been witnessed rising from the pool and floating down its seamlessly endless tunnels. Her spirit is believed to be tied to the location where she met her tragic end at her husband's hands. The bones of a woman were discovered here back in the 1940s. Now, it's said that she was left with a white wedding gown, which is how, how she's now been referred to as the Lady in the White. And as you can imagine, over the years, we've had a lot of people say they've seen her sitting on the rocks up here, they've seen her at the end of the passageways, heard her footsteps, heard her voice. Uh, the most common ones seem to be people feeling her grabbing onto them or breathing down their necks. Many years ago, Chislehurst Caves held a competition that dared someone to stay in the caves overnight. The winner? would win five pounds and recognition for their efforts. Unfortunately, by the time a person resided in the caves for just a few hours, they were subjected to a large number of paranormal events. They were ready to escape with little concern for the cash and recognition. Nobody completed the challenge and the challenge was stopped due to safety concerns. Now, we're not allowed to hold a competition anymore. Uh, as you can imagine, health and safety jumped all over us. Uh, people doing the competition seem to get the only light they have with a candle. Now, if you get up scared and go running off with a candle in your hand, the candle blows out. We were led to the living quarters, where we were given a history of how they built an underground town during the war. Every tunnel passage in the cave system would have looked like this. Now, conditions of smoking, toilet carts going up, dropping waste on its way up, the fumes and smells of that would have mixed in, uh, even just the general heat. 15,000 people is a lot of body heat. They would have been very hot for people down here as well. Uh, but because the amount of people that were here, it did turn into a small underground town. And a lot of the people that had professions on the surface were using those to help everybody else out down here. So they ended up with almost everything you could think of. Uh, they had banks, theatres, dance rooms, cafeterias, dentists, barbers. Uh, one guy even bought a projector and they set up a cinema room. There was one child born in the caves and she was christened in the cave chapel with the name Kavena Wakeman. She had the name until she turned 18 and then she legally changed her first name to Rose and using Kavena as her middle name. Surface to give birth. Um, fortunately for that lady, there was an air raid going on at the time, so an ambulance just couldn't make it here. Uh, but they did give her daughter a name for where she was born and the poor little girl ended up being called KV. It's a horrible name, and as you can imagine, as soon as she was old enough, she changed We then explored a little bit of the underground town before heading back above ground. But believe it or not, there wasn't any major illnesses or incidents. Hold it in there. Oh, could be. No, thank you. Right, come on. Citizens oh, Advice yeah. Bureau. <laughs> dentist. Did you see the dentist? Yeah. Lava. It's one of the smallest passages in the whole system right here. You can see everybody ducking. It's massive. Yeah, it was, all, it was over. Quicker than I thought it would be though. Although, how long was we in there? 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah, bloody hell. It went quick, that. 
I loved learning about the history of it and the religious sacrifices and the hauntings. Yeah. Obviously, but also it was intriguing to hear about the civilization down there as well. Favourite points for me was, I've got two, I really liked the bit where it was the uh, Druid sacrifice spot on the longest um, tunnel. It, the, well, there's two stories, isn't there? Mm. Then my second favourite part was where they did the demonstration, where they uh, took all of the lanterns off us, went round the corner, yeah. put us in pitch black and played some noises so you could really feel what it was like um, when they were using it as an air raid shelter uh, and living quarters when, obviously, throughout the war. Loved it, amazing experience, and uh, quite spooky in some parts as well throughout the caves. What about your favourite bits? Yeah, I just I liked um, it's not a bit really, but I really liked having my own like oil lamp to yeah. like walk around with. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, the tour guide was really, really knowledgeable. He was like giving us loads of fun facts and stuff, weren't he? Yeah, he um, was really I'd, good. I'd say my favourite bit was probably when I made you jump straight after yeah. we. Uh, we had, we had, they basically told us about this girl. So there was this. Yeah, like, that was another favourite part. There. I forgot about it. Yeah, there yeah, was a yeah. Pond in there basically, and it comes from the rainwater, and they filled it in back during the Second World War, just because there were so many people down there. It used to be 15 feet deep. Now it's just like about that deep because they filled it in with loads of pebbles and rocks and stuff. When they were filling it in, they found a body, body of a woman, of yeah, of a woman in a wedding dress down there, and now there's like a whole, like law around it that she haunts uh, Chisler's yeah. Castle. The Lady in White. The Lady in White, yeah that's right. Yeah. And uh, they did like a challenge in the 70s, 80s, around that time. Yeah. If you could stay down there all night with just a, some candles and matches. From 8pm to 8am. Yep, that's right. And you could yeah. win a fiver. You could win a fiver. I would well do it. I'd do it for free. Yeah. Do I went free. down in the caves in, um, in Scotland. Yeah. And uh, I stayed underground in the vaults there. I stayed underground like, overnight there. I'm not um, taking... with, two, with three other people. So I'd happily do that. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. loved it. The whole experience, or the tour rather, uh, is £8 per person, which I find to be an absolute bargain for what you get in there. It's a 45 minute tour mm. full of in, uh, information. You've got a great tour guide. Mm. That being said, I'm Axel. I'm Sean. And we'll see you in another video.